Meet Arnold. And he's walking around the zoo today. Hey, Dipknob, stop acting like you're king of the beasts. Have some respect, Arnold. You and the chimpanzee share ancestors. We diverged from them seven million years ago. Life lived in the forest and in open plains simultaneously helped us develop bipedalism and our upright posture. This in turn freed up our hands for tool use and other useful activities such as taming fire. Cooking food helped contribute to better and faster digestion, which together with some other things led to us developing our bigger and better brains. Yes, Arnie, I know it's hard to believe, but the march of evolution is still ongoing. For example, because we began to cook food before eating, our jaws have shrunk and wisdom teeth have already stopped growing in 20% of human beings. In addition, along with the improvement in the quality of food, the average height of Homo sapiens has increased by 10 centimeters. But then again, so has his weight. However, for modern people, it's not body changes that are so important, but technology. It allows us to move around while sitting, fly, and even get a cold beer without getting out of our comfy chairs. What'll be next? Wow, look! It looks like scientists have created a supercomputer that can predict our future. And it has a message for us. Let's listen. Over the past hundred years, the number of people on the planet has quadrupled. At the same time, humanity has destroyed 80% of all animal fauna. And environmental pollution has already led to irreversible climate change. Therefore, in the future, due to global warming, our bodies will stretch, our skin will darken, and our ears will grow out for better heat dissipation. Whoa, Arnold, you look a lot like your neighbor, Henry. But the fact is, in the last 150,000 years, Homo sapiens' brains have shrunk by 200 grams, and they're continuing to shrink. Elon Musk has managed to dehydrate people and pack them into capsules. Look, it works like instant noodles. Just add water. On board, there were 67.5 billion capsules. So now, there will be 10 times as many dumbasses on Earth. But this isn't your problem. Although, actually, it probably is your problem as well now. With so many people, they can't all be provided with transport. It's faster to walk. Each person on the planet produces about 0.75 kilograms of garbage every day. So, more than 200 trillion tons of garbage per year. This is enough to completely fill about 99 Grand Canyons. Power plants are being built everywhere because 75 billion people consume about 125 billion kilowatts per day. This amount of electricity is enough to charge 8 trillion iPhones. But this also means emitting huge amounts of CO2 into the atmosphere. You don't need to be a genius to realize just how seriously this will affect the climate. Free space is in short supply. So here are your new roommates. Only men. Reproduction is strictly prohibited by law under penalty of death. This world definitely doesn't need any little Arnold Rugrats running around. Although you were unlucky with women anyway. By the way, you hungry? You want to eat something? All food is now synthetic and recycled. You just tasted a recycled toilet paper patty. I cooked it just for you, like pearls before swine. Anyway, you still have to spend the night in this corner. Due to the increase in CO2, all the glaciers have melted and flooded 35% of the land. Given the agricultural needs of people for food, less than 1% of land is left for housing. Now, only rich people can afford to sleep with their legs extended. Damn, Arnold, I envy such a shorty like you. Go sit and watch a movie on the internet on Slowfix. Oops, to enter, you need to take a number and stand in line. You are the 1,250th. Due to overpopulation, internet speeds have dropped by 99.5%. Look where you're going! Arnold, what's wrong with you? Does your tummy ache? This is the perfect chance to test my quantum resizer and find out from the inside what's hurting you. 
put this helmet on and I'll connect your consciousness to your nano copy and insert you into your own body. But first take off your underpants. It's the fastest way to get you to your destination. Here we go! You ate a burrito which contained the eggs of some very smart tapeworms. Arnold, just look at this. They built a whole metropolis inside of you. They even built a zoo. Let's check out the zoo. Today's Monday, so there's a 50% discount. My God, this is a zoo of pathogenic viruses and bacteria. I admire your interlopers. Spanish flu, plague, Ebola, tuberculosis, swine and bird flu, and a bunch of other rare pathogens all in one place. Look, there's even my favorite, the little studied baronavirus, also known as sad horse disease. It mainly affects horses, cows, rabbits, and other animals. Arnold, I wouldn't put my fingers in the cage if I were you. It's suspected that the infection causes schizophrenia. Arnold, unfortunately, your stomach hurts due to parasites. Look, they're building a highway in your intestines, a water park in your bladder. If they build a data center in your head, you'll most likely kick the bucket because your head is so small. You need to figure out how to expel them from your body. The sooner, the better. If you open all the cells of this Pandora Zoo, most likely it'll help you expel the worms. Okay, Arnold. Oh. I built a machine that makes things invisible for 24 hours. Don't move, Arnold. Wait, what are you... Oh, you are such an imbecile. I'd smack you upside your head, but damn it, I don't know where you are. Put this hat on so I can see you. Okay, you have 24 hours. What are you gonna do? Who'd have any doubt that's where you'd go first? If my machine worked according to the principle of invisibility, you'd become blind because the invisible body's refractive index becomes equal to that of air, and the lenses in your eyes would lose the ability to reflect light rays and focus them on the retina. The retina itself also wouldn't be able to absorb visible light with its rods and cones due to its invisibility. But as I can see, your eyesight seems to be okay, you slobbering ignoramus. Okay, now that the gym is closing, can we do something else? You have 18 hours left. I meant something a little more significant, you blockheaded jerk monkey. After all, you could reveal terrible secrets and perform incredible feats. You could even make your way into Area 51. Oh, right, it's in a different state. Do you have any ideas? Are you thinking about stealing it? That's a terrible idea. In any case, you need a plan. Of course, thanks to invisibility, you'll be able to stay long after closing. But then you'll need to bypass the guards. And there are also lasers all around the diamond. Can you really do a triple somersault, steal the diamond, and leave the museum in the car that will bring new antiquities for the exposition exactly at 2 a.m.? Even so, this is a really bad idea. The museum closes in an hour. Go hide in the corner and wait. And take off your hat, you mutton-headed twit. Get ready, Arnold. The main thing, obviously, is not to get caught. Arnold, it's go time! Aw, oh, nuts! All you had to do was a triple somersault, and you screwed it up again. <sighs> well, now, now you have to run for your life, Arnold! The exit is just around the corner. Come on, Arnold, you can do it! Damn, looks like you stole a glass copy of the diamond. Well, I gotta say this is an unfortunate turn of events. Although, to be honest, it's pretty logical that the original would be kept in a safe. Now you'll never have the love of the beautiful tug eye. What a beautiful day. What could possibly ruin this? Well, what if the Earth suddenly stopped? 
at a full stop due to inertia, all objects will fly east, reaching a speed of more than 1,500 kilometers an hour. Also, atmospheric disturbances will create strong winds. But at the same time, don't forget, the gravity of the Earth will remain the same. The momentum of the oceans and seas will create giant tsunamis, absorbing 27 kilometers of land per minute. A complete day will now last a full year, as the Earth, at a speed of 29.78 kilometers a second, makes a full circle around the Sun. Daytime, sunrise to sunset, will last for six months under the hot, burning Sun, with the remaining six months being nighttime, with the chill dipping down to minus 55 degrees. With the Earth stopped, its centrifugal force will create high hills at the equator. Later, they'll disappear, leaving one solid ring continent at the equator, separating two gigantic oceans. But the worst thing that will happen will be due to the core of the Earth stopping spinning. After all, it's the large molten metal sphere, which, through rotation, generates the Earth's magnetic field. The magnetic field protects the planet from radiation, so from now on, being on the surface is deadly dangerous. You're now in the Dashti Lut Desert in Iran. This is the hottest place on the planet. If I were you, I'd start conserving liquids. There are three million sweat glands in the human body, so you're going to lose up to three liters of fluid per hour. And all the salts in your body are going to get taken out of the liquids, and this is going to cause spasms in your limbs. Arnold, don't jump in there! It's just a mirage. Hmm, I guess sometimes there really is some benefit to your stupidity. Okay, so now you're gonna get cold. Let's find out where you are. This ain't the best situation, buddy. You're in the village of Oymyakan, Yakutia. This is the coldest place on Earth. A temperature of minus 71.2 degrees Celsius was recorded here. Yikes! According to statistics, 140 people a year here die from hypothermia. Come on, get moving! The human body temperature is 36.6 degrees Celsius, but in cold like this, it'll drop. And how? Your body's gonna try to warm up, and it does this by shivering. Then your memory will start to go. And next, your mind. Although, for you, Arnold, that's pretty much your normal state. This will be followed by a full sense of warmth. Arnie, buddy, you really need to start stamping your feet or death is gonna get you. Come on, Arnold, you can do it. Great job, buddy. Where did he go? Ooh, looks like you flew right into the Bermuda Triangle. According to rumors, planes and ships often disappear here. Arnold, where did your jet wings and clothes go? Seems like the rumors are true and you're about to disappear. Science doesn't recognize the strange things taking place in the Bermuda Triangle. However, there are several non-scientific theories. According to one of them, everything that disappears here ends up in a parallel universe. Look, everything's a little different here. You look strange even to this dog. As you can see, your house has also changed a lot. I advise you to be careful there. Meet Arnold. This is Arnold, although from a parallel universe. He's much more successful than you and even sports a stylish mustache. Ah. And it looks like he doesn't like you at all. At the bottom of the Bermuda Triangle is the mythical city of Atlantis. Don't ask, because I have no idea why the ancient Atlanteans needed all these planes and ships. But ancient customs and traditions are harsh. Someone like you will be immediately turned into a slave. Or if you can't handle it, you'll be turned into fuel for steamboats. Careful, Arnold, new vehicles are arriving. There is another theory. Everything that happens in the Bermuda Triangle is due to aliens. And perhaps they're taking vehicles to study human technology or putting it in a museum. 
Just look at how much stuff they have in their exhibits. Since aliens are poorly versed in terrestrial life forms, you were placed with mushrooms. Don't be offended, Arnold. It could be because of your haircut. You won't be bored for long. They say aliens abduct people for a different purpose. You must get pregnant and carry their alien baby. Sorry, Arnold, but aliens are also bad at gender. Meet Gertrude and Arnold. This little piggy is a little smarter than Arnold. And no, not because it has a Neuralink chip in its brain, but because she came here by bus, unlike our red-headed fool who parked his car with the Mafia for $50 an hour. At this conference, Elon Musk will demonstrate the process of installing an advanced microchip into the brain of these cute little monkeys and in the near future into the brain of a person. Arnold, stop teasing the primates with your keys. See, great. Well, you had it coming, buddy. I don't understand how Elon could have invited such a doofus to his conference. From a scientific point of view, Neuralink is a fairly simple device. It's a set of electrodes that transmit electrical impulses from neurons in the brain to a computer. But from a technical point of view, it's an astonishingly complex device. Imagine that the brain is a big ball of extraordinarily tangled wires, and you need to carefully connect to it without damaging anything. Arnold, run! It's time to pay for parking or a tow truck truck is going to take your car. We need to get the keys from the chimpanzees as soon as possible. Who, with parking prices like these, you're going to have to live on dollar store ramen till the end of the month. Get in the monkey suit. You'll have better luck this way, trust me. I know it smells like butt cheese, but it's only for five minutes. One more time, Arnold. You can do it. Hey, dudes, where are you taking Arnold? Only I'm allowed to experiment on him. Elon, please be gentle with Arnold. But really, who am I talking to? I'm just a voice in the head of this dumbass. Arnold's brain is almost the same size as that of a primate, and this version of the chip will suit him perfectly. Thanks to Neuralink and Wi-Fi, Arnold can now communicate with other owners of this device via the power of thought. He also benefits from a tremendous increase in the speed of interaction with the Internet. Arnold, come on, concentrate. You can do it. Download Monkey Sign Language from the Internet. Maybe we could transfer your consciousness to a flash drive. I wonder how many gigabytes we'll need. It's hard to believe, but Arnold's brain has a huge memory density. Its capacity is 2.5 million abstract gigabytes. For this, we'll need 2,500 hard drives with a volume of one terabyte each. Subscribe and hit like to learn more interesting facts. Poor guy. Don't worry, Arnie. Soon you're going to be a cyborg, half robot, half human. Then you won't be afraid of anything. Everyone else will be afraid of you. Hasta la vista, baby. A large part of the brain is occupied by various life processes. Even to fart, millions of neurons are needed. The volume of semantic memory, that is, information in symbols, knowledge about the world, is significantly less than the total volume. For instance, to learn all of English requires only 12 megabytes. Don't worry, Arnold. We managed to transfer all the data from your brain, though it really didn't turn out to be that much. Everything fit onto one flash drive. I even installed a couple of new features. Now, you, Arnold, can solve math problems without a calculator. The precise working memory of the brain can hold between 5 to 9 digits at a time. That's only about 40 bits, or 5 bytes. You can increase working memory by combining different elements. For example, 3, 5, 2, that's 3 elements. But 352, that's one element. 
Arnold, you can start living your usual life again. And now you don't have to worry about stomach pain from eating too much pizza. However, there are a few minor issues now, buddy. Toby doesn't recognize you. Lying on the bed is problematic. And you can't eat regular food. Regular food could cause a short circuit in your new cyber body. Well, you've repeated your mistake again. This will definitely negatively affect all vital processes on the planet, particularly in medicine, or such absolutely crucial needs like social networks, likes, and reposts. Only Satanists won't be affected. It might even benefit them. And here's our ultra-fast turtle. Like everything electric, Elon's car broke down. The important thing here is not to celebrate ahead of time. He might be dumb, but Arnold for sure knows how to wink perfectly. Too bad he's intellectually challenged. The battery has died. Now, these guys need somehow get out of the desert. It's good that Elon has already come up with something. And it's even better that his trunk has a, a bucket, a mini rocket, and groceries. Ooh, potatoes are a great idea. After all, one potato can stably deliver 0.5 volts of voltage. It will take about 13 volts to start Arnold's combustion engine car. So, with 26 potatoes, a zinc nail, and copper wire, we should have enough to start the car. Darn it! The crank current is too low. To start the engine, you need hundreds of thousands of potato batteries. I'd advise you to hurry up. The sun is setting and the desert nights here get quite cold. Wow, guys, great outfit. I hope we can do without the famous blue crystal here today. Oh, wait, I know what you're trying to do. If we take zinc bowls, screws, coins, sponges, potassium oxide, copper, brake pads, and we mix them together and connect them to the car, then we'll have a regular battery charge. The guys did everything right. It's a shame that there still isn't enough power to drive. Hurry up, the clock is ticking. Arnold, stop digging around there. Wait, show me what you found. A magnet! This is exactly what we need, Arnold. Hey, Elon, this isn't the best time for that. Ah, it's for a common cause. In 1831, Faraday conducted a similar experiment for the first time. For this, we need a coil, copper wire, and a magnet. We insert the magnet in a coil wound with copper. We move the magnet inside, and in each coil of copper, a voltage of 0.01 volts is generated. But due to the large number of turns, everything is working just fine. Let's see how it works for the guys. Wow, just be careful with your finger. Well, at least we survived. Man, the finger will grow back. Arnold, leave the Tesla here. And now the party continues. Uh-oh. See you in the next episode! Oh, man, it hurts just looking at you. Okay, I have an idea. See, we're surrounded by trillions of bacteria that generate useless energy from the organic matter they feed on. So what I'm thinking is, let's build a bacterial power plant that uses your poop for fuel. Hmm, not enough for all your gadgets, is it? But what did you expect? Bacteria are really, really tiny. I know, let's unbigify them. A bacterium the size of a cat will give us 46,000 times more energy. And we can get even more bacteria and more fuel. America produces 128 billion liters of sewage a day. This could provide electricity to an entire city and will also solve the problem of water purification. Ginormous halobacteria that feed on salt can provide free energy from the ocean and desalinate water for desert regions. 
three and a half million tons of plastic are thrown away every day. The embigified Idianella sakaiensis can recycle this plastic into energy. Then you can open up an electric vehicle charging network. Unlike fuel energy, which annually emits 37 and a half billion tons of CO2 into the atmosphere, bacterial energy is absolutely pure and emits only oxygen. Sounds like a great startup idea. Arnold, you've solved humanity's environmental problems and made trillions of dollars in the energy business to boot. Arnold! 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 Wake up! What? Are you dreaming about cat-sized bacteria again? You should know that cell division is only possible in microscopic organisms. Once a bacterium reaches its maximum size, it simply divides into two. This happens every 20 minutes. So in just six hours, one bacterium can multiply into 25,000. And your debts are multiplying at the same rate. Time to pay up, Arnold. Hurry, hurry, or in 20 seconds, you're going to be bacteria food. What do you have there? Don't tell me. That's a homemade burrito. Did you make it for the astronauts? The rocket has successfully docked with the ISS. Get ready. To open the door, you need to click on the green button in three, two, one. Green button, Arnold. Green. I doubt that any of the astronauts are going to rush to your aid after you left them without any food. You have enough air for eight hours. Somehow, during this time, you have to get to the ISS by yourself. Moving your body around ain't going to do nothing. Even if you run like Sonic, your body's going to stay in one place. So, here are some real options for moving in space. The first option is using the air from your oxygen tank. Air moves through its tubes at a speed of 50 kilometers per second. This kind of energy, in just 60 seconds, could carry you as far as 3 kilometers. But this will significantly reduce your air supply. So, let's move on to the second option, burrito. You wrapped it in foil, and foil is an excellent reflector. If you make a sail out of the foil, then particles of light reflecting off of it will transmit their momentum to the foil and thereby accelerate you through space. Did you hear nothing I said about a sail? Son of a schmuck! Ooh, we could use that too. Gases exit the human body at a speed of 3 meters per second and they can fill an entire balloon in a day. You just need to think of a way to let them out. Arnold, what are you up to? How many burritos did you eat? Just a little bit left. Stretch! And... Remember that show Love, Death and Robots? You're oh. gonna have to tear off your hand. Okay, or just your finger. You only have three meters left. Detach part of the suit and throw it in the opposite direction. This will push you forward. <laughs> Ooh. Since you agree, I think you should find out more about the upcoming surgery. The first successful head transplantation was done by Charles Guthrie in 1908. He did it on dogs, though. One of the heads was sewn to the neck of a dog's body upside down. In the 1950s, Demikhov achieved full functioning of a second head. He transplanted 20 heads together with the front half of the dogs. Then the head of one dog was transplanted onto the body of another. And then there was a monkey, which after transplantation even tried to bite one of the doctors. In 2013, Sergio Canavero announced plans for a human head transplant. The estimated cost was $12.8 million. In 2017, under his leadership, a dead human head was transplanted onto a corpse. Actually, it suits you, Arnold. Now it's time to rehearse your part. I hope you don't screw up and disgrace mm. these beautiful heads. <gasps> You're gonna have to juggle as you ride your unicycle on a springboard through burning hoops. Yay! They don't seem to like you being so stupid, Arnie.
Try not to interfere with the professionals managing your body. All that's required of you is to not spoil the performance. The grand premiere. All eyes are fixed on you, Arnold. Today, you are the main part of the show. Fingers crossed, buddy. You're doing great. Just a little more and... Is that Tagaya over there? Did she come to see you? No, no, don't get distracted. Not now, Arnold. What a doofwad. <sighs> By trying to be a gentleman, you disgraced yourself and the Truel huh? brothers. That was the greatest failure this circus has ever seen. Psst. Arnold! Arnold! Wake up! You pissed them off so much that they want to get rid of you. You know you can't run away from them, right? Although, you're so clumsy, you seem to have succeeded. Almost succeeded.